thanks for watching. We're going to do a quick video on reinforcing the sides and the bottom of the engine bay of a jet ski or a super jet. In this case, it's a 92 super jet. Uh, quick disclaimer here. I'm not a professional videographer or jet ski, fiberglass, Kevlar mechanic. Um, so this is a way to do it. This isn't necessarily the best way, but I did a little bit of surfing on the internet, looking at uh, some of the popular websites and the forums, uh, H uh, XH2O and PWC Today, and I couldn't find any good videos on it. So I figured I'd try to make a video on it. I apologize some of the videographer-ness, the, some of the video is kind of tough. Uh, it's tough to do the project and video while you're going, uh, so bear with me. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. And if you know of a better way or you see something that I got wrong, please post it in the comments so anybody that watches this will pick up a better way to do it. Here's the Kevlar, and this is actually Aramid because Kevlar, I believe it's a DuPont brand name. So Aramid is actually the material we're talking about. And here's how it comes. As you can see, it's on a roll, and I've already cut some pieces out. But it's a pretty heavy weave. you got the same challenges as you do with fiberglass. That these, uh, the, the ends fray easily. Um, you may have to do a little bit of work. A little, Bugs Bunny here in uh, Elmer Fudd. You may have to do some smoothing to get these laid out right before you start cutting. I used, I made a template out of uh, butcher paper for the pieces that I need, rolled this out on a big table, and laid that out and traced it out with a Sharpie, and then came back with my EMT shears and cut out exactly the, the uh, shape that I needed. So that's the Aramid, this is Aramid 354, and it's, it, as far as the weight goes, it's a 7.5, but because it's Aramid, it's a lot stronger than the glass. So I don't know what that equates to in glass, but I'm guessing that it's probably at least a 15 weight. Uh, maybe somebody in the comments, if they know better, can post uh, that knows more about materials than I do. So that's the Aramid, which I used in the, which we'll see is going to go in the bottom of the engine bay. And then I use that in a little reinforcements in the side when I'm doing the foot rails. And this is really neat looking stuff, and it's significantly cheaper. By the way, the uh, Kevlar was 45 bucks a yard, and that's 50 inches long. So that's a fair amount of material. Uh, and I, I used about a yard of it. And then the uh, Kevlar Aramid Weave, uh, correction, this is carbon fiber Aramid Weave, which is a really neat looking pattern, uh, a little bit lighter. Um, still pretty strong material. Comes the same way, you have the same challenges. Again, the EMT shears to cut it, and I marked it the same way making a template out of butcher paper of what I needed it, laying it down and tracing it. Uh, this is a little bit harder just because it's got black in it and so sometimes you kind of lose your trace lines but you can figure your way around that. Uh, and I'm using a marine grade uh, resin. This one I happen to get from Tap Plastics which uh, works pretty well. For the entire engine bay reinforcement of the hole I ended up using about one and a half of these quart, quart containers which was about 75 bucks of just the resin and the hardener. Uh, since then, I've started using from uh, US Composites. It's a very similar uh, epoxy uh, for glassing. And that's uh, it's a little bit cheaper and it seems to go a little bit further. This is a three to one ratio. Make sure you read the directions. It's a three to one ratio mixture with the hardener. Whereas the Tap Plastics Marine Grade is a four to one. Every surface that I was working on, I did my best to get that surface level so that the epoxy resin would, would level itself. It works real well, uh, self-leveling. So when I was filling the uh, bond line, I had the ski flipped on its side, and then I used blocks and my engine hoist to get that piece level. When I did the floor, uh, the bottom of the engine bay, I had that, obviously the ski was flat about like it's sitting now, and I had it flipped up on its side, and actually I had to raise the, the tail, the stern a little bit, because of the taper. As it, as it gets narrower towards the bow of the ski. So I had to actually block up the tail a little bit. But the point that I'm bringing out is the more you can have the surface you're working on level, the better it's gonna come out. Uh, when it comes to mixing your epoxy, I, uh, there's a couple of tools I recommend. And I learned this the hard way, and then I went back and uh, did a little research on the internet. Um, I recommend getting some graduated cups. Um, you can get these a lot of different places. I think I got these from US Composites, but it might have been tap plastics. They're about a buck a piece and you can use them a whole mess of times. But it gives you good ounces so you make sure you're getting your ratios right when you're mixing. 
and I use that cup and then just a straight tongue presser to mix it real well. And then once I get it mixed, I pour it in a standard paint tray because it will cure a lot slower. The more epoxy resin you have together, the faster it will cure. So when, if you have it just in a standard paint tray, it'll cure a lot slower, it gives you more work time with it. Plus, what you're putting on is curing at the same rate as this, so it gives you a good indicator when you got to stop working with whatever you're working on. So I mix up my ratios, mix it up real well with a tongue depressor, and then pour it into the paint tray. I usually leave the tongue depressor stuck in, the, in this cup so that when I'm done now, I can pull that tongue depressor out and that epoxy resin will come out and I can use that cup again for another time. I use the disposable brushes. You can get them at Lowe's, Home Depot, anywhere. I think they're about a buck a piece. Uh, but if you go to Harbor Freight, they have a box of 36 for 10 bucks. And I highly recommend that because I've gone through quite a bit of these every time I mix up a piece. Okay, here's some of the tools that I used. Uh, primary for taking the ribs out was an angle grinder with a, uh, a little bit of a radius grinder bit. Um, this was the, the heavy work and I did most of the grinding with this, but you gotta be careful you don't take off too much and go into the sidewall of the jet ski because there isn't much material there. So I finished up doing the uh, fine work with a small bit on just a standard Dremel and then polished it off a little bit. That also allowed me to get, uh, by the way, get down a little bit closer into uh, the seams uh, down against the floor and at the top uh, where it gets into the bond line a little bit. Uh, I had to do a little bit of grinding uh, in where the rib actually comes up into the bond line uh, before I filled those with epoxy. And then I cleaned it up with a uh, Harbor Freight Cheapo uh, uh, Orbital and then a standard large orbital to get it all roughed up nicely with uh, 80 grit so that the adhesive, in this case the epoxy resin, would adhere well. So I used 80 grit on, on both of these um, to rough it up for that final bit and to smooth it out. Uh, but that was this was the primary tool and I did most of the grinding with that. And here's an example of why we want to do this reinforcement. Here's a picture of a friend of mine, Ski, who cracked it doing an incomplete barrel roll. Almost sank it, his bilge pump just barely kept up with it as he got back to the beach. Okay, the first step is to remove everything you can from the engine bay or inside the ski. So here's a shot of my ski with the engine, the e-box, coupler shaft, fuel tank, water box, and the handle pole all removed. You could get away without removing the handle pole, but it makes life a lot easier if you do remove it. Basically, you want to take everything out that you can so that you can get in there easier and get around. I also use lots of Ziploc bags and Tupperware containers to keep track of all my little bits. Looking into the engine bay here, you can see at the bottom of the picture where I've got those four white arrows, the four lower ribs that you need to grind out. There's four on each side on the bottom and three on each side on the top. In this shot, you can see a couple of the ribs on the upper half that you got to take down. And then you can also see the horizontal ribs on the lower half. Basically, you want to take that all down flush with the surrounding material. At the bottom of the ribs, where they hit the floor of the engine bay, you want to try to make it a radius corner so you're not creating a stress point. And I think you can see that in the next picture here. Here you can see I've got the right hand side of the ski all ground down. You can see a little bit of the radius corner I was talking about where the ribs meet the floor of the ski. Um, you can see that the top three are gone also and I'm getting ready to prep this now with 80 grit uh, sandpaper and then fill the bond line. You might also have to do some trimming of the bond glue with a carpet knife or a exacto exacto knife. Here's the left side of the ski all prepped up and now I'm ready to put some epoxy into the bond line. Here's a shot of the bond line all prepped up and ready to pour epoxy in it. Uh, it's tough getting all the dirt and grit out of there. Uh, sanding down in that crack was difficult and I had to do a little bit of trimming with a carpet knife of the bond glue a couple of places that came up pretty high. I actually ended up using the grinder bit a little bit to clean that up and make it smooth. Then I cleaned it out real well with a q-tip and some mineral spirits you want to get that surface as clean as you can. 
In this shot, you can also get a better uh, perspective of what I was talking about, radiusing the bottom of the ribs where they meet the floor. You don't want a sharp point there or that'll make a stress point and that's where everything will break. Here's the epoxy curing in the bond line. I did this in two stages. Uh, the ski on its side and then level to get the back half of the bond line and then to get the front portion of the bond line I actually raised the tail of the ski or the stern of the ski a little bit so I had a nice smooth transition from front to back and from the bottom of the uh, hole to the top of the hole so that the material will lay nice and flat across there. At this point in the project I decided to go ahead and reinforce the hole where the handle pull mount uh, bolts on. So here you can see a shot. This is two layers of Kevlar. I prepped it real well with the uh, 80 grit sandpaper. It took all the paint off so it was adhering to the hole and then laid two, uh, two layers of Kevlar on extending up over each side and up the front a little bit. My other ski is actually cracked in this area so I figured that would be a good thing to do right now too. Okay, just wanted to get a quick shot of the rig that I used to reinforce the inside or what would normally be the bottom side of the handle pole bracket mount on the hole. I basically hung the hole upside down off of my engine hoist, put a uh, furniture dolly there under the, under the stern of the ski, trying to get the surface as level as I could so I could do the best layup. So this is the bottom side uh, up in here where the light is. And it's hard to get a video with some Kevlar so that I got a sandwich but it's hard to describe so basically I could sit on that stool and sand in there to get it all smooth and then lay the uh, lay the Kevlar and the epoxy wouldn't run off got that surface as level as I could worked out pretty well here's the Kevlar laid in the floor of the engine bay you can see in this shot from I went from the back of the water box mounts all the way to the bulkhead and then up the sides a little bit I went around the battery box mounts and around the engine mounts. I put a piece of tape over all the threads so I didn't drip any epoxy down there. I came up the sides of the ski just a little bit so the side walls would overlap once I do the side reinforcement. I just prepped this real well with 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, every time I thought uh, had I sanded enough I just thought about I would hate for this to peel up and I sand it a little bit more to make sure you got a good prep and then clean it real well. Okay, here's the Kevlar carbon weave on the sides. You can see it came out fairly well. You can get a little bit of perspective about how it lays over the uh, epoxy that I poured into the bond line. Make sure you scuff up that epoxy before you start putting this in. And you can also see that I came down onto the floor a little bit and had to cut around the remainder of the ribs. Take your time doing this. Um, it can be challenging, but I, hopefully it'll all be worth it. Sanded that area down nice and flat so that this sits real flat and there's no rocking. And then painted it. So basically the whole improvements and reinforcements are complete. So I got Kevlar on the top and bottom of where the pole mount goes. Kevlar on the floor underneath the engine, the engine bed, and then the sides are carbon Kevlar combination. So here's the mostly completed project. Obviously I've got some plumbing and electrical to do here in the uh, engine bay yet, but I've got most of the components setting in here. So you can see how the battery box covers the seam there, uh, fuel tank covers the seam on the front side, uh, got the seam covered with the exhaust, and then to the rear, I don't have the e-box in yet, but that'll fill most of this cavity here. And so that's about what it's going to look like. Hopefully the video helped. Appreciate you watching, and good luck with your project.